Hey guys, Slink here with another tutorial and today I'm going to be showing you a few different ways to extract the vocals and other elements out of a song using phase cancellation, spectral subtraction, and artificial intelligence. By the way, this video is sponsored by Audionamics. Right now they're having a Black Friday sale, 35% off, and their new software Extract Stems is super cool. We're going to take a look at this software later on in the video. I'll put a link in the description to the Audionamics website. People incorrectly think that this is an easy thing to do when it's really not. You know in crime TV shows, is how they're like can you enhance it can you enhance it can we enhance this or can you enhance it hold on a second i'll enhance and then all the graphic designers of the world are like uh that's not how it works anything that claims to be doing real zoom you can't digitally enhance the data. computer you can't increase the resolution of you wouldn't download a car well, it's kind of like that. Separating audio into different layers or extracting vocals is nearly impossible. To help understand just how complex this problem really is, I like to imagine a Bob Ross painting. All the colors are mixed and blended together. There's several layers built up on top of one another to create a beautiful picture with happy little clouds and happy little trees, right? And then you come along and say, can you take all the paint away except for the Bandite brown paint? What? Like, that's... That's impossible. Even if you took a photo of the painting and then put it into Photoshop and tried to filter out every color except for Bandai Brown, you still wouldn't be able to see all the brown paint because some of the brown paint has mixed with other paint to create new colors. So how do you decide which some colors brown paint and to some other paint brown paint because of the behind other so paint there's no as well. way. It's just a crazy concept. It's like that with audio as well. Once the musical composition of all its layers has been printed down to a single audio file, then everything is just mashed together and blended together. It's not as simple as just muting one channel because there are no channels, it's one file. The only perfect way to get vocals or any other element out of a song is to have the actual project file or you have access to the multi-tracks of the song before the song was printed down to a single file. Now sometimes labels will release an acapella along with their single because they know DJs like to remix it and play it like that. But if the acapella has never been released and the multi-tracks have never been released, you're basically shit out of luck. And that's why you're watching this video. Let's start with phase cancellation. So sometimes labels release instrumental versions of their songs and in perfect circumstances we can use that along with the original version of the song to extract the vocals using phase cancellation. But the circumstances need to be perfect. Let me show you how it works. Let's imagine a simple sine wave. Every time the red line goes above this black line, you can sort of imagine the cone of your speaker pushing outwards. And every time the red line goes below this black line, you can imagine the speaker cone pulling inwards. Now, if we take a phase inversion of this sine wave, which is essentially flipping it upside down like that, and we play these one after another, it would sound like a loop. Just because the cone of your speaker is pulling inwards when it's usually pushing outwards doesn't mean that it's going to sound any different really. But if we play them at the same time, then suddenly you're telling your speaker to push out and pull in at the same time. So what happens then? Well, <laughs> you hear silence basically. Now this is useful to know because if there was a small variation on one of these sine waves like this, for example, now we're telling our speaker to push out, but in a different shape to the way it's pulling in. We'd actually end up hearing something a little like this. It's mostly silence and then the small variation sticks out. Now, if these sine waves aren't perfectly identical aside from the one variation then this whole technique falls apart and that's why this phase inversion technique is temperamental it, it has to be perfect okay so we're in ableton now let's do a real world test of what we just learned i'm going to record something really quick with my microphone here like why does everyone think i'm obsessed with mayonnaise we'll turn that up a bit <laughs> and we also have an operator here just playing some nice chord we'll bounce this into one single audio file why does everyone think I'm obsessed with mayonnaise? Okay, so now we have a file where there's chords and my voice playing at the same time. So what I'll do now is mute my voice and record just the chords. Now, let's get two channels going here and we'll phase invert this channel that's only playing the chords and we'll see what we have left over. So we can do that by dragging on a utility and then these little buttons down here, left and right, that'll phase invert the left channel and phase invert the right channel. So if everything works right, we should just hear my voice. Why does everyone think I'm obsessed with mayonnaise? <laughs> 
Now, look at this. Let's say I compress this audio file here. Why does everyone think I'm obsessed with mayonnaise? You can hear that the phase cancellation is now struggling a bit because these two files aren't identical anymore. They're being processed differently. All right, let's try this technique on a real song now. I've got this track here by A Skills called Track Pant Thing, and it was released on Westwood Recordings, and they also released an instrumental mix, which is really handy. Again, we'll just throw the utility on the instrumental here and we'll phase invert the left and the right channels. Now when I push play, because the intros here are totally identical, we're hearing absolutely nothing. And then as the vocal comes in over here, you can actually see the vocal. I was just doing my track pan thing. Looking like something that the car dragged in. Yeah. But when you know the people that are running this shit. Yeah. Keep going for so you can see that it's phase cancelling perfectly, but there's some weirdness because the vocal isn't exactly clean. It's not, you can hear some other instruments in there, you know? I was just doing my track pan thing. The reason for that is the way that these two tracks were created. When you're mixing vocals in a song, you're going to be compressing it. You might even sidechain some of the instruments to the vocals so that the, those instruments duck when the vocals come in and everything's being compressed and limited and the addition of vocals will push the compressors and limiters a little harder than the absence of vocals in your track. So that very small difference is actually coming through with this phase inversion. If I move this front marker just a tiny hair, suddenly everything has gone pear-shaped. Nothing's phase cancelling anymore. Even if the instrumental is 1.1 of a millisecond, off from the original, it won't phase cancel correctly. This is why phase cancelling audio from vinyl is almost impossible. When you put a vinyl on a record and then there's a needle and everything, the, the pressing of the record itself, there's so many variables that can mess up the phase inversion technique here. And mind you, both of these tracks are full quality FLAC files, totally lossless. Things need to be absolutely perfect. Okay, let's talk about spectral subtraction. It's kind of similar to phase inversion, except it's much more forgiving. You don't need to worry about things being exactly perfect because the way spectral subtraction works, you're kind of just deleting content out of the original song using a kind of template, I guess. So in the case of this song, this Charlie Tuna song featuring Talib Kweli, it's called Lock Shit Down, released on Westwood Recordings. There was no a cappella or instrumental that was released with this song. So how do we get the vocals out? Well, let's take a listen to the beginning of this song. So you can kind of hear that this same loop is happening across the whole song. That da -da 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 -da. So if we just cut a piece of that out of the intro and then loop that up like so, I'm just going to set a loop here. We can just drag this across the whole song. Again, we can try a phase inversion, but it's not going to work because the circumstances aren't perfection. This won't work. Listen. It doesn't work, unfortunately. So we're going to have to use spectral subtraction. And I've made a Max for Live patch that can do this. Basically, you take your instrumental that we've Frankenstein together here using a loop from the uh, intro of the song, and we send that into the five and six channels of my spectral subtraction Max for Live device. And same thing here except into three and four on the original. Now, when we play this. We came to just do this for you. Sit back and just watch us bubble. Hey, of all secrets, I'm the best chap. Making sure my first step is my best step. I watched my investments while the rest slept and changed tunes like the faders on the best text. Now, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than not having an acapella at all. Um, I think it's doing a pretty decent job. About six years ago, I did a video about how to extract acapellas and vocals out of songs and I showed off a plugin called Knockout which was an old 32-bit mono plugin that only worked on PC and basically I've tried to recreate that same plugin in Max for Live but I've made it stereo. <laughs> I'll try to explain what's happening here but it's 
really complicated. I'm not sure if I really understand it. I just know that it works. But basically we have plugins. So our audio is coming in on these channels and then going into this poly, which if we have a look at that, it's taking those ins and sending it into here. So this is based, this poly is used to create like a stereo effect. And then within this patch, there's this patch where we're taking the audio from the time domain to the frequency domain using the fast Fourier transform algorithm and then we're catapulting it, which I don't, I'm not quite sure what that means. It's something to do with changing the phase of it, but basically we're taking the left channel of our original song and the left channel of our instrumental song and minusing one from the other. The polter car is to reverse whatever the carter pole does, <laughs> I'm not really sure, and then we take it back out of the frequency domain and put it back into the time domain, and the same thing happens for the right channels as well. That's kind of what's going on here. And then we have a couple of settings to change the windowing and also the kind of buffer size. I've done some experimenting and I've found that 4096 works the best but you can try some different options here. What I would like to do to improve this Max for Live plugin is to have some kind of way to blur or increase the amount of subtraction that's happening. I don't really have any control over how hard it's subtracting. I just have it subtracting. Um, so maybe I need to have some kind of multiplier in there. But yeah, I'll leave a download link for my little Max for Live patch in the description. So that's how spectral subtraction works. Pretty impressive, but it's not perfect. None of these techniques are perfect. Okay, let's talk about artificial intelligence and computer algorithms now. You guys know Deezer, right? It's a music streaming platform. It's basically the Walmart brand of Spotify. <laughs> anyway, on GitHub, they released an open source AI tool that can separate the layers of a song. I have no idea how this works. I have no idea how to use Python or Docker or anything like this. But luckily, this super rad computer hacker nerd girl, Azuki, has taken this GitHub information and compiled it into a VST3 plugin that you can use in Ableton to, in real time, separate the layers of a song. Let's check it out. Okay, so following Azuki's instructions, it's kind of tricky to install, but once we get it all installed, we can find the plugin here in Ableton. As an example, I'm using this Sparky song called The Kids featuring Lynx and this is also released on Westwood Recordings. Check it out. So let's drag this Splitter DJ plugin that Azuki made onto our channel and if we click the little arrow we can see we've got four sliders. Uh, these are essentially volume sliders for the different elements that are in this song. Let's try it out. It definitely introduces a ton of lag in your project, so if you did want to extract the vocals out of this song, you would have to turn everything down. And I don't think you can freeze and flatten. You'd have to record it in real time onto another track. It's very experimental. There's probably loads of bugs with this plugin, but it is essentially free. It's not even five bucks. You can actually, she actually just has the links to download it right now. So you don't even need to buy it, but she's just asking for five bucks, which is pretty cool of her to just put that out there for free essentially. But yeah, it's really cool. It doesn't sound perfect does it? It's a little bit like spectrally and it sounds like Lynx is singing through a, a sock or something. <laughs> As I explained at the beginning of this video, this is crazy. I can't even believe this even exists because this is such a tough problem to solve with artificial intelligence. I have no idea how it works. It's incredible. Okay, let's check out Extract Stems by Audionamics. This is a premium standalone app that uses artificial intelligence and computer algorithms to separate any audio file into four different layers. It's similar to the Splitter, GitHub, Python, open source, Suzuki hack together VST plugin thing that we were just talking about, except I think Extract Stems does a better job and you have a little more control over how things sound with their D-bleed option. It doesn't happen in real time and it's not free, but you get what you pay for. Let's try it out. All we do is drag an audio file in. In this case, I'm using a lossless copy of that Sparky song we were just listening to. And then you choose your separation options. So I'm 
I'm going to go for four stems and it's going to upload the song to the audio dynamics servers, do the artificial intelligence magic and then send us back four WAV files that we can listen to. And now we're downloading and here we go. Oh man. So it's kind of like having four different Ableton channels. We've got our vocals, drums, bass, and other, which is just like other instruments and stuff. But who would I wanna call your word? This app is different because of the D blade. If we turn this on and turn this all the way up, it's going to kind of try harder to separate it. It's like not going to be as forgiving. It's not going to let anything else through as much as it can. Whereas if we turn this all the way down, it's going to be a little bit more lenient. This is sort of like feathering, I guess. So what I like to do on vocals is turn this all the way down because then you get more of the vocals. But with that, you get more of the other stuff. But the vocals do sound a lot cleaner. Check it out. And then if we turn up the D bleed. You can hear that sort of feathering effect. It's really unforgiving when we turn that all the way up. So that's what makes this app really special. If I extracted this and tried to use it in a remix, it would almost be passable as, as if I had the real acapella. And to do that, we can just go export and you can save whichever WAV files you like and you can choose your location, you can choose your format, then you just hit export and it does it. I think this really shines as well when you just mute one of the layers. It's less obvious that something's missing, that something weird and digital is happening. If you're a DJ or a producer and you're thinking about remixing this song, for example, yeah, like muting the bass line, muting the drums, it's gonna give you enough to work with to then go ahead and remix this song. Then you can throw your own drums and bass on there and call it a remix. It's certainly impressive what you can do with extract stems. The beauty of it is its simplicity. You don't have to have a computer science degree or a audio engineering degree to figure out how it works. You just drag and drop the audio file into the software and the rest happens automatically. The results are not perfect, but I think extract stems brings us one step closer to perfection. And certainly from a DJ producer perspective, I'm always looking for new and interesting ways to remix and DJ songs and extract stems does the job. Thanks again to Audionamics for sponsoring this video. If you do want to check out extract stems, there'll be a link in the description and I would recommend checking it out now because it's on sale 35% off. So thanks for watching guys. Peace.